Chapter 9. The Night of Flesh Eating Zombies. It was the dead of winter in the town of Brashov, nestled in the shadows of the Carpathian Mountains in Transylvania. The snow-covered landscape glistened under the pale moonlight, casting an eerie glow over the town. Countess Monica Montero, a gorgeous black-skinned African vampire and blood descendant of the legendary Lord Count Dracula, stood on the edge of town, her crimson cape billowing in the cold wind. Her piercing red eyes scanned the snowy streets, a sense of foreboding washing over her as she sensed a new darkness creeping into the region. She had just finished battling a werewolf created by the nefarious Dr. Nicholas Florin, but now there were rumors of a new threat lurking in the shadows. As the Countess prepared to leave Brashov for her home at Castle Montero, she couldn't shake the feeling that evil was once again on the rise in the land. With a determined set to her jaw, she vowed to protect the innocent from whatever malevolent forces lay in wait. With a final glance at the snow-covered town below, Countess Monica Montero spread her bat-like wings and took flight into the night, ready to face whatever horrors awaited her in the darkness. For she was not just a vampire, but a warrior against evil, sworn to defend the helpless against the darkness that threatened to consume them. And so, the stage was set for a new chapter in the dark and twisted tale of Brashov, where ancient legends and modern horrors collided in a deadly dance of blood and death. Part 1. As the Countess soared through the frigid night sky, her senses tingled with a sense of unease. The town of Brashov lay below her, its twisted cobblestone streets winding through the snow-covered buildings like a maze of secrets waiting to be revealed. With a graceful landing on the outskirts of town, Countess Montero paused to gather her thoughts. The rumors of mutilated bodies and resurrected zombies weighed heavily on her mind, spurring her into action. She knew that evil lurked in the shadows, and she was determined to root it out before more innocent lives were lost. With a flick of her wrist, the Countess summoned her loyal bat familiar, Malachi, who swooped down from the night sky to perch on her outstretched arm. Together, they set off towards the heart of Brashov, where the evil priest was said to reside. The streets were eerily quiet as they made their way through the town, the only sound the crunch of their footsteps in the freshly fallen snow. The Countess could feel the darkness closing in around them, a palpable sense of malevolence hanging in the air like a shroud. As they approached the priest's decrepit church, a sense of dread washed over the Countess. The building loomed before them, its dark silhouette etched against the moonlit sky like a grim sentinel of death. With a deep breath, Countess Montero pushed open the creaking door and stepped into the church, Malachi at her side. The air was thick with the stench of decay, and the flickering candlelight cast eerie shadows across the walls. And there, kneeling at the altar, was the evil priest. His face twisted into a sinister grin as he turned to face the Countess, his eyes gleaming with malice. Without a word, he raised his hands and summoned forth the resurrected zombies, their lifeless eyes fixed on the intruders in their midst. With a fierce battle cry, Countess Monica Montero prepared to face the horde of undead creatures, ready to fight with all her strength and cunning to protect the innocent souls of Brashaw from the dark forces that threatened to consume them. Part 2. Countess Monica Montero stood amidst the swirling mist, her eyes glowing red with fierce determination. The evil priest, with his twisted smile and dark intentions, stood before her surrounded by his army of resurrected zombies. The undead creatures snarled and groaned, their decaying flesh twitching as they prepared to attack. Without hesitation, the Countess leaped into action, her vampire abilities enhancing her combat skills. With lightning speed, she dodged the zombies' clumsy strikes, delivering deadly blows with her razor-sharp claws and fangs. The air was filled with the sounds of battle, the clang of steel against steel, the groans of the undead, and the Countess's fierce battle cries. As the fight raged on, the Countess's courage never wavered. She faced the horde of zombies with unwavering determination, knowing that the fate of the innocent lay in her hands. With each strike, each dodge, each leap, she pushed herself to her limits, drawing upon her inner strength in the face of overwhelming odds. 
The dynamics of the fight shifted constantly, with the Countess adapting to her enemies' tactics and exploiting their weaknesses. She weaved through the undead horde like a dancer, her movements fluid and graceful, yet deadly and precise. Suspenseful moments hung in the air as the battle teetered on a knife's edge, each side determined to emerge victorious. Suddenly, a dramatic turning point occurred as the evil priest unleashed a powerful spell that sent a wave of dark energy crashing towards the Countess. With a quick reflex, she summoned her own power, creating a shield of darkness that not only repelled the spell but also enveloped the priest in its shadowy embrace. With a triumphant roar, the Countess charged towards the immobilized priest, her eyes blazing with righteous fury. In a final act of defiance, she plunged her claws into his chest, ripping out his dark heart and sending him tumbling to the ground, lifeless. As the priest's army of zombies crumbled to dust around her, the Countess stood victorious, her chest heaving as she surveyed the aftermath of the epic battle. The mist began to clear, revealing the sun rising on the horizon, its warm rays banishing the darkness of the night. With a sense of satisfaction and relief, the Countess knew that she had triumphed over evil once again. She had faced her fears, her doubts, and her enemies head-on, emerging stronger and more determined than ever. And as she turned to leave the battlefield behind, she knew that she would always fight to protect the innocent and defend the light against the darkness that sought to consume it. You've been listening to a short story. The Countess Monica Montero. Vampire. A story by Butch Leek. For more of our stories log into Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, or the Clubhouse website at www.clubhousepodcastradiotoday.com. For our printed books, visit www.blurb.com user Ventura 11. My name is Kendra, thank you for stopping in.